your seats all ready for you up there on the old top rail, so get comfortable as you can, and we'll all relax for a spell while we get our little song fest underway. Our little neighbor, Sally Foster, has a favorite for us. I know. I see she's here. Hi, Hi honey. And of course, former Nosy Waters, no doubt, will come up with a couple of honeys for us, as usual. Now, which one of you Waters will start us out here? I'll give her a whirl, Pappy, if you'll try me one more time. I'll try you one more time. Let's have it. Yes, I know I've been untrue And I've hurt you through and through But please have mercy on this heart of mine Just take me back and try me one more time If my darling you could see What you're leaving done to me You'd know that love is still a tie that binds. So take me back and try me one more time. Shovel in a little more coal And when we cross that white oak mountain You can watch old 97 roll It's a mighty rough road From Lynchburg to Danville And a line on a three-mile gray It was on that gray That he lost his average And you see what a jump he made He was going down the grade Making 90 miles an hour When his whistle broke into a stream he was found in the rack with his hand on the throttle and called it to death by steam. Now, ladies, you must take warning from this time now and on. Never speak harsh words to your true love and husband. He may leave you and never return. <laughs> Thank you. 
Circle Gang was one of the happy-go-luckiest the gangs I think I ever know. There wasn't a day went by but what somebody would uh, pull some kind of a gag for laughs. Well, one day, the boss took on a new hand, a fellow by the name of Pete Wattles. Pete come blowing into the bunkhouse like a Kansas tornado, all wind and a yard wide. Yeah, and perched on his shoulder was the greenest, meanest-looking, blackest-talking parrot I ever saw in my life. And he was just as noisy as Pete was. And between the two of them, they made more noise than the barrel of firecrackers, sure enough. Well, Pete fit right in with the bar and circle gang. He was always up to something like the rest of us was. But Pete's parrot, Homer, he didn't fit in at all. And when somebody mentioned that darn bird in an uncomplimentary manner, Pete was ready to fight. The fellas asked him time after time to get rid of the bird, but Pete would just get sullen-like and tell them to mind their own business. Said that Homer was going to stay, or he didn't. That Homer was going to stay, or he didn't. That Homer was going to stay, or he didn't. That Homer was going to stay, or he'd know the reason why. Well, sir, we all got even with Pete and that doggone bird on Christmas Day. I'll never forget it as long as I can remember. Early in the morning, two of the boys <laughs> sneaked in and they grabbed the bird before he could yell and beat it. Well, when Pete woke up and found the parrot was gone, he raised the roof. Said he'd kill the man that stole that bird. Well, we tried to make Pete think that maybe the bird just flew out by himself. Well, anyway, by dinner time we had him talked out of his mad mood, partly. Well, when we sat down to the Christmas dinner table, Pete was sitting next to Charlie Farrell, who could do a little ventriloquism. Only Pete, he didn't know that. The cook brought in the food. Yeah, it was, he, he, had, he had a pheasant for every man in the place. And when he put Pete down, it was a little bit smaller than most pheasants. Looked about carrot size. <laughs> <laughs> Pete started to take a bite, and all of a sudden, that bird on his plate said, Hold it, Pete. You wouldn't, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you wouldn't eat an old friend, Homer, would you? <laughs> well, all the rest of us kept on eating as though we hadn't heard nothing. <laughs> Pete blinked his eyes and started to take another bite, when again he heard, Oh, Pete, we've been friends a long time. Don't do it now. 
Well, sir, Pete jumped up and got away from that table and started on a run for the door. And as he got to the door, he turned around and said, I'm going to get the, my gun out of the bunkhouse, and you'll be needing a new cook in the morning. <laughs> well, <laughs> when he reached the bunkhouse, there was Homer perched on the head of the bed, yeah, singing at the top of his voice. The boys had slipped the parrot back in while we was eating. Well, sir, from that time on, Mr. Pete kept Homer quiet as a mouse. They had golden silence in that bunk out. He never found out it was Charlie Farrell doing the talking either. <laughs> and I reckon it was just as well he did. <laughs> Pappy, that deserves that Harry song. All right. <laughs> when I reach out, a smiling, sure it's like a morning spring. In the lilt of Irish laughter, you can hear the angels sing. When Irish hearts are happy, up the old corral again for this little visit, but we'll be looking for all of you the next time we get together with our little song fest. In the meantime, this is Pappy Cheshire talking for the whole gang, saying so long, everybody. So long. Lord.